Good morning, glory day. Would you please stand as we sing and worship? to welcome all of you, especially on this Sunday, this All Saints Sunday. And uh, as we begin our worship, we would invite you to please do check in. Let us know you worship with us, especially if you're a guest. We would be honored to know that you spent time with us today. And when you check into our lives. Um, and then we also ask, secondly, uh, of their um, living and of their faith, how that impacts our life today and how we can live out their legacy in our life of faith as we follow God's calling in our life. And then by remembering those who have gone before us, our own faith is strengthened. Um, and so we see this especially in the verse from Hebrews chapter 12, where it reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, and that's the saints, those cloud of witnesses. Here's the challenge to all of us. Let us also lay aside every weight and every sin that clings, clings so closely 
and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And endurance and running that race of the life of faith by remembering the saints who have gone before us, it helps us do just that. This day is not uh, the day of the dead or uh, Dio de los Meritos. It's not that at all. We're not praying to the saints that they go to heaven. They're already with Jesus. This is a day where we remember them and help remind ourselves of their legacy of faith as we live our lives. Um, to uh, our left and to our right flanking us are, is a legacy wall. We've invited those of you to remember your loved ones and to write their names, and we'll highlight those names later on in the service. So today is a day of remembrance, of thanksgiving, of sadness and loss, but also of joy, knowing that in the end, our Lord Jesus Christ has conquered death, and he rose again to give us new life. So we begin in our Lord's name as we celebrate the lives of the saints, and most importantly, the faith that he's given us to live out, as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, in your last supper with your disciples, you gave them something new, recalling a promise made by God that he would establish a new covenant with his people, a promise made for a restored relationship of everlasting life. We thank and praise you, Lord, for the sacrifice you made through your body and your blood for the forgiveness of all our sins. 
As we come to your table today, nourish us with your presence and unite us with your love until we sit with you at your heavenly feast. Through you, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs shall they eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would invite the congregation to please stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room? Where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, who one who is eating with me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, is it I? And he said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the son of man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to please, please be seated as we continue our worship as we receive our offerings. Uh, if you're a uh, first-time guest with us, we invite you again to use this time to check in. And uh, as the offering plates are passed by, if you give electronically, we thank you for that regular uh, uh, contribution that you make. Just uh, grab the plate and pass it down the aisle uh, to share with someone else. Um, and we would also invite you, uh, especially for those of you online, to read our communion statement and uh, as a way to prepare uh, your heart to receive our Lord's body and blood as we celebrate communion later in the service.
congregation may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I am Steve Garbrandt, and I'm blessed to serve as vicar here at Gloria Day. And this week, we are beginning a new sermon series on the Lord's Supper. In this four-week sermon series, we're going to be looking at how the, the Lord's Supper is connected to the Old Testament and a fulfillment of the Passover. We're going to be looking at how we truly receive the body and blood of Christ in, with, and under the bread and wine. We're going to be looking at how the Lord's Supper is a feast of forgiveness and food for our soul. And we're going to look at what it means to prepare ourselves to receive this means of grace. You see, the, the Lord's Supper is a means of grace in that it is a vehicle that delivers God's grace to us. It's one of the means of delivering to us what Christ won for us on the cross. And Jesus instituted this meal on the night before he journeyed to the cross. So let's take a look at Mark chapter 14. We'll begin at verse 12 as we explore the Lord's Supper. Mark chapter 14, verses 12 through 16 says this. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. You see, on the night before Jesus was crucified, he met with his disciples for a meal to celebrate the ancient festival of the Passover for one last time. He had celebrated this Passover meal with them in the previous two years of his ministry with them. But that night, the night before he was crucified, that night was to be different forever. On that night, Jesus understood that he was about to die. Jesus knew his friends would soon desert him and run off. He knew that they would be frightened and alone. He knew that one of them was about to betray him and another deny him. But in spite of all that, Jesus has a special meal with them. And before eating this special meal with them, this special meal of remembrance, he washes their feet. Even the feet of his betrayer and the feet of the one who is to deny him. And then Jesus began to teach them, prepare them, and charge them for what was to come next. At this last supper together, Jesus wanted to give these friends and followers of, of his a connection to himself that could be theirs throughout their lifetime. A gift of his presence that would allow them to keep hope and remain strong even as they face the dark days ahead. So at this last supper with his disciples, Jesus took this ancient festival supper of remembrance and he changed it. He changed it into a new meal of remembrance and hope. Let's remember why Jesus and his disciples are eating this meal together. They were celebrating the feast of the Passover. And to understand this connection, we need to see how the Old Testament account of the Passover during the Exodus is being fulfilled in the meal that Jesus is having with his disciples for the last time. When we journey back into the Old Testament, to the time of the Exodus, we see that the Israelites had been living in the land of Egypt 
for quite a long time. Ever since Joseph had brought his father and his family uh, to that land. And for a long time, the Israelites were treated kindly in Egypt because of Joseph and his relationship with the Pharaoh. But over time, that changed. There was a new dynasty, a policy change, a new Pharaoh with the ambitions of expanding the Egyptian empire. And there was fear of the Israelites growing the population and taking over, all of which led to the Israelites being forced into slavery. The children of Israel continued to live in the land of Goshen, but the land no longer belonged to them. They now belonged to the land, to Egypt, and to the Pharaoh who was Egypt. They were to serve Pharaoh with back-breaking labor, sweating in the fields, and building his treasure cities. Pharaoh owned everything and everyone. And after years of painful toil and oppression, the Israelites remembered the God of their fathers and cried out to God to rescue them from this bondage and this anguish. And God heard their cries for mercy. Deliverance was near. God chose Moses to carry out his plan of deliverance and to lead God's people out of Egyptian bondage. This is what is meant by the Exodus. The liberation of the Israelites as they were delivered from their enslavement and bondage in Egypt. But when Pharaoh refused to let God's people go, the Lord demonstrated his power by bringing down judgment on the Egyptian false gods. The Lord poured out plague after plague, and still Pharaoh hardened his heart. Nine different plagues, and Pharaoh would still not release the Israelites. Calamities threaten Egypt's prosperity on every side, but the Israelites were spared. The final plague was about to happen, the destruction of every firstborn male. The firstborn male of men and of animals would be destroyed, but not for Israel. Before God passed through the land in his judgment, he had given the people of Israel some specific instructions. So we journey to Exodus chapter 12 to read about that. Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says this, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. God is telling Moses and Aaron that the time has come. This is it. This is the new beginning for you and the people Israel moving forward. Exodus chapter 12 verses 3 through 6 says this, Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, and you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. He told each family to choose a lamb, a one-year-old male lamb that was perfect and without blemish. And the family was to care for it for four days, bring it into the household and care for it. And then at twilight on the fourth day, kill it. Exodus chapter 12, verses 7 through 11 says, Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts of the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do 
Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. After killing the lamb, they were to roast it and eat it that evening. Together with the unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they were to have their cloaks tucked up into their belts, their sandals on their feet, ready to go, their staffs in hands, ready to travel in a hurry out of the land of slavery. But there was this special instruction given about the lamb's blood. You see, they were to spread the lamb's blood on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the house. It was the night of judgment. But the sacrificial death of the Passover lamb brought deliverance for the people of Israel. The blood of the lamb protected them from the wrath of the Almighty. Its roasted flesh nourished their bodies for strength for the long, perilous journey ahead. They ate in haste, dressed and ready to go, ready to leave at any moment at God's command. And in that horrific night of waiting, they experience God's loving protection, even in the midst of his fierce judgment. Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 through 13 says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt." They were to take some of the blood's lamb and smear it on the doorpost of their houses. This was to be the saving sign. Wherever the Lord saw the houses marked by the blood of the lamb, he would pass over that house without bringing death into it. For that reason, while all of Egypt was reeling in pain and agony, with the loss of their firstborn sons. In the homes of the Israelites, there was peace and security behind those blood-sprinkled doors. There was peace because of the blood of the Lamb. It was a night of judgment, but the blood of the Lamb protected them from the wrath of the Almighty. To the Israelite people, the Passover meant deliverance, peace, and freedom. But it was also a reminder of the place that God was to have in their lives as their deliverer, their protector, their redeemer as long as they trusted in him. The Lord's redemption needed to be stamped forever on the hearts and minds of future generations And so God commanded the annual reenactment of that first Passover for generations and generations to come. Exodus chapter 12, verse 14 says, This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast of the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. That is why Jesus is celebrating the Passover with his disciples. And on that Thursday evening, as Jesus was celebrating this Passover meal with his disciples, it would be the last time. But this meal was to be forever different. For in this meal, Jesus offered himself as the sacrificial lamb. So let's look back at the count in Mark. Mark chapter 14, verses 17 through 21 says, And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, 
Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, the one who is eating with me. And they began to be sorrowful and say to him one after another, Is it I? And he said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. On that night, Jesus understood that he was about to die. Jesus knew that his friends would soon desert him and run off. He knew that they would be frightened and alone. He knew that one was about to betray him and another deny him. But in spite of all that, Jesus has a special meal with them. Jesus wanted to give these friends and followers of his a connection to himself that could be theirs throughout their lifetime, a gift of his presence that would allow them to keep hope and remain strong even as they face the dark days ahead. And so he took this ancient festival supper of remembrance and he changed it. He changed it into a new meal of remembrance, of hope, because of the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Remember what John the Baptist proclaimed about Jesus in John chapter 1, verse 29. As John the Baptist sees Jesus, he says, The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Oh, yes. This meal was going to be different. In this meal, Jesus was instituting a new way in which people were to relate to God. Mark 14, 22 through 25 says, And as they were eating, he took bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Instead of a spotless lamb for the sacrifice, Jesus' own blood would be the final and complete sacrifice for all time. His blood was poured out for us. In the Exodus, God sent Moses to deliver God's people out of the bondage of Egypt. In Jesus, God sent the ultimate deliverer. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, his son, who was the Lamb of God. In the Exodus, the Passover lamb died so that the people could live. In Jesus, the Lamb of God died so that the people could live. In the Exodus, the blood of the Passover lamb was sprinkled on the wooden doorposts of the houses. In Jesus, the blood of the Lamb of God was shed on the wooden beams of the cross. Yes, the Lamb died so that the people could live. The Lamb of God died so that you and I could live. Here in this meal a meal of remembrance as it's recorded in Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember our deliverance from the bondage of sin. We remember the sacrifice of Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We remember that we are a redeemed people and reconciled to God by grace through faith in Christ. We remember the greatest charitable gift in history, the sacrifice of Christ that we would have life and salvation and the forgiveness of sins. It is here, in this meal, the meal of remembrance the feast of forgiveness that we receive God's grace. Grace poured out for you and for me.
Amen. Please pray with me. Dear good and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us, your church, around your word and sacraments. We thank you for your grace that you freely give to us. We thank you for the gift of life that you give us and for the gift of forgiveness and the gift of salvation. Lord, we lift up those who face trials and tribulation. Remind them, Lord, that you are with them. Lord, we lift up those who, whose world has been turned upside down with turmoil and, and a lack of peace. Remind them, Lord, that you come to them, that you give your peace. Lord, we pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Grant to them your peace and your comfort as they grieve with hope. Lord, hear us as we cling to your promises with faith. Hear us, Lord, for the sake of your Son, who poured out his life and who died our death and was resurrected for our resurrection to give us life and salvation. Amen. to experience is a reading of the names of all saints. Um, and the order that uh, the names will be read are from the ones that have passed last November to most recently this November. And I would invite you to uh, close your eyes or dedicate this moment uh, to remember their legacy. And uh, we'll have their names also up front on the screen as well. And as these names are read, I would invite you to pray for their friends and their family that they would continue to grieve with hope. Cindy Babineau. Al Muma. Platt Henderson. Cora Kistler. Bill Watley. Mickey Zarnick. Donna Stoa. Larry Smith. Paul Adams. Joe Murray. Ed Haas. Lynn Wolf. Richard Warrington. Bob Blackwell. Robert Skufka. (coughs) 
Derek Stone. Mike Marin. Paula Sandel. Sandy Garcia. Lee Judd. Wanda Rowley. Lou Wade. Sylvia Hopkins. Wayne Depute. Val Fleming.
As we prepare to receive our Lord's meal, we're reminded that we are connected to all the saints, that this faith is a faith bringing us together in community to give peace to our hearts and also strength for our faith. Uh, as you follow the invitation of the ushers to guide you to your communion station, uh, we would invite you to accept that invitation, and if you have mobility issues, let an usher know we'd be honored to bring communion to you. And to also know that there are some options of uh, the common cup uh, to receive wine along with the individual cup and as well as a gluten-free wafer with the regular wafer. Uh, let's go to our Lord and uh, remind ourselves of uh, our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we confess this creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived of the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite the communion assistants forward. And we hear these words that our Lord spoke in the night in which he was betrayed when he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sin. And in the same way also after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The gifts of our Lord's body and blood are for you, that your faith might be strengthened in him. Welcome to our Lord's table. Okay, take and eat the body of a little broken.
encourage you. Uh, sometimes we see that the work that we pour into each child, it may, we may not see the fruit of that in years to come. Uh, but you know you're making an impact, and especially the prayer partners as well, lifting up the mentors uh, that are doing this work on a weekly basis. And so we are encouraging you to remind yourselves that you're honoring God, you're representing Gloria Day, and the impact you're making in the lives of all of these children. And so I ask you to pray. Would, would you join me in prayer? Lord, we ask for your blessing upon our partnership at Whitcomb Elementary and Hope Active as we serve the students and the faculty and the staff in your name. Help us to faithfully support and encourage these men and women who are part of the Kids Hope program. Guide them, O oh God, as they serve students in our community. Help them to speak words that will heal and inspire. Help them to be fully present with their students, whether in prayer or in person. And for each relationship that's represented here between a mentor, a student, and a prayer partner, Lord, we give you thanks. Give us eyes to see the students in your care as you see them. And for the transformation that you happen, that you provide through these relationships, Lord, we give you thanks. And for all of this, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I also wanna take this time to especially highlight Jean Peltier. Uh, Jean Peltier is uh, the director of this ministry, um, and she does a lot of the legwork to just make it happen from connecting mentors to children, uh, to making sure all the paperwork is filled out. Uh, she is doing all the behind the scenes and all the frontline ministry to make this ministry happen. She's been doing this a little more than six years now. And uh, we also want to take this opportunity to thank you, Jean, for all the work and dedication alongside Stephanie uh, to make this ministry impactful. So Glory Day, would you welcome me? Uh, would you join me in thanking them for what they do? So Glory Day, I invite you to stand and bless these mentors and these prayer partners. And uh, if you're new to us, uh, this is something that we invite in the benediction and the blessing to have a handout uh, so that you might receive and then a handout to them to bless them as well. So go with our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and continue to give you his peace and strength now and always. Amen.